Welcome back. I'm Kelsey Fabian. Wayne Lusari, a maritime archaeologist for the state of Michigan, joins me this morning. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning, Kelsey. And you are here to talk to us about the 100th anniversary of the Great Storm of Thunder Bay. I am. Exactly 100 years ago today, a system started occurring over Michigan and the Great Lakes that ultimately combined to create what was the perfect storm for the time that has been described as a white hurricane. It was a, a huge circular pattern system that rolled from Duluth all the way over to Buffalo, New York, and it had a blizzard in the mix. It created huge amounts of waves and chaos along the Great Lakes shoreline and ultimately resulted in the loss of a dozen vessels with their entire crews. And where were these vessels coming from? All over? They were all coming from all over. The, uh, the first couple of ships were sunk in Lake Michigan in Green Bay area, and then uh, there were losses in Lake Superior. The vast majority of the losses, eight out of the dozen, occurred right here in Lake Huron, and then another ship was lost in Lake Erie. And you had told me since then there hasn't, there might have been storms as big, but there hasn't been as devastating of a loss, right? Th that's right, exactly. Yeah, there were almost 280 people that were killed in this storm over the course of about three and a half days. And uh, since then there have been similar storms, uh, but not nearly as intense for commercial shipping. And that's what, is that the kind of vessels that were lost? They were all commercial ships? Yeah, they were all pretty big, large uh, steel ships. There were uh, two wooden vessels that were involved in the storm. Many dozens more were actually wrecked in the process, but they ultimately were recovered um, and they were repaired and they went on to you know careers uh, in the business. Um, but a dozen were lost. Most of them were approaching 500 feet in length. They were very large ships, including the Isaac Scott that's right here at Thunder Bay Island. And do you guys go and dive around that, explore that ship a lot? Yeah, we've looked at quite a few of them. Uh, four of the dozen have not yet been found, and so we're kind of out there uh, keeping that in mind that two of them are in Lake Huron that haven't yet been discovered. But the Isaac Scott's been known for about 20 years now. It's sitting in about 180 feet of water just off of Thunder Bay Island. Uh, it went down with the loss of 28 crewmen on board. We sent our OVs down on it. I've not dove it yet, um, but it's inverted on the bottom, so you only see the outer hull. You can see the propellers and the anchors and that sort of thing, but most of the superstructure is buried down in the sediment. Did anyone survive out of the 12 vessels that sunk? No, they were all lost with their entire crews. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, do you guys actively search for the ones that you haven't found yet, or is it just something you're maybe hoping to stumble upon? Yeah, we look. We look pretty systematically across the sanctuary and the adjoining areas, and uh, we have a pretty good feel for what kind of historic vessels might be in those search areas, uh, but we're not out there looking specifically for those vessels. And being that it's the 100th anniversary, why is that exciting for you guys at NOAA? It really gives us an opportunity to kind of highlight the storm, to remember and, and commemorate the sailors that were lost in the storm, and to really uh, use that as a, a means of teaching people about our maritime heritage. We also have a lot of artifacts from one of the ships, the Regina, that was sunk down off of Lexington, and we have a pretty big collection of materials that uh, came off of that shipwreck when it was found about 20 years ago, and they're at an exhibit at the Great Lakes Maritime Heritage Center. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they're in some of those drawers you pull out and you Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, the, the bell is there. The bell is currently at the library. Uh, There's a big presentation commemorating the storm of 1913 at the Alpena County Library, and so the bell will be there for about a week. Uh, but most of the rest of the artifacts are at the Great Lakes Maritime Heritage Center. And what do you personally think the most fascinating thing about the storm in general was? It was, uh, before I started researching it a few months ago, I really had the feel that a lot of these vessels were caught out in the storm. And in fact, most of the vessels knew about the storm. The gale flags were up at Sault Ste. Marie and at Marquette and at Port Huron and other places that these ships were departing from. And they actually weren't caught out in it. They made a conscious decision to go out into it thinking that they would be safe, that they would uh, ultimately get to their destinations. And it was just bad decision making at the time. And why do you think they thought that they could get there? I I think that there was it as bigger than they expected. Yeah, there were there were lulls in it as the circular pattern was rotating around, almost like the eye of a hurricane, where all of a sudden there's sort of a lull in it. And I think that they thought that the storm was was coming to an end, and that they thought it was time to to get a move on it. And ultimately, uh, the backside of the storm came around, the winds picked up again, and the seas increased again, and uh, ultimately it resulted in the loss of the ships. All right. Well, thank you so much, Wayne, for educating us on the 100th anniversary of the.